So before watching this video, make sure you watch part one, because in part one, I explain all of these four keywords that you need to know for the IB, as well as introduce ecology. So uh, making sure to watch this video will give you a good insight and a clear understanding on what ecology is. And so what I'm teaching next will make a lot of sense. So species, remember, don't be confused when you hear the word species and think animals. Um, right, when you see grass on the field, when you see a tree, those are still different species. Because there are plants don't mean that they aren't species. Okay. Um, now, importantly, in this video, um, I'm going to explain how species can be divided into a different category depending on what they eat. Okay, so let's look at this plant and this animal here. They're both different species, but they can be grouped into different categories because they feed or eat differently. For example, we know plants eat through photosynthesis, right? They don't have a mouth. They don't, they're not going to go move around and catch stuff, right? They eat through photosynthesis. And animals? Well, they have mouths, so they're going to go eat stuff, right? So that's a clear difference on, on different ways of feeding, right? Now, there's actually a name for this. If you are a plant and you eat um, through, um, through photosynthesis, you are called an autotroph. If you are an animal and you eat with your mouth, other plants or other animals, you're called a heterotroph. See, autotroph. Autotroph directly translates to self-feeding. They feed themselves by making their own food. Um, and hetero means hetero. If you translate that, it means different. So they, they eat, um, they feed different by eating different animals. They different feeding. They eat by, they feed by eating something else. Now, there are different kinds of heterotrophs. So it, when you're younger, your parents uh, probably t uh, taught you about um, some, some animals only eat plants and other animals only eat meat and creatures like us can eat everything, right? They've probably taught you those kind of words. Do you, do you remember what it's called when an animal eats only plants? Um, so it's called, I'll just show you all the, all the names directly here. So if you are like human, you're an omnivore. You can eat plants, animals, all those things. If you can only eat plants, you're called a herbivore. Herb meaning plant-like, right? You eat herbs, herbivore. Carnivore, that means meat eating. You only eat meat. Carno means meat in Spanish, right? So car, carn uh, refers to meat, so they're meat eaters. And there's two more categories, detrivores and saprotrophs. You don't need to be so... You don't need to know about these so much. Just recognize them and understand what they refer to. But these two, detrivores and saprotrophs, is what you're actually going to have to care about more. Um, well, but we'll go into good detail on why these matter in nature. Because a lot of people have a real problem remembering these because they don't see their use. So I'll make sure to explain that um, in good detail so you can really understand why they're so important. They're crucial. They're absolutely crucial. But at the beginning, I also thought found it really hard to remember them because... I didn't understand why they were important. So real quick here, I'll just quickly bring down the actual definition because um, I use a simple definition out of my own words, but here's the real definition and I'll quickly explain it. So an autotroph is defined as something that uses inorganic matter to make organic matter. So two key words here, inorganic and organic. Inorganic is anything, any source of food that is that does not have carbon in it okay so in in, in other words anything inorganic is basically non-living so for example water is inorganic if you um the scientific equation is h2o right h2o you don't see a c there c stands for carbon and h2o does not have carbon in it uh, furthermore uh, we know plants use sunlight sunlight is just radiation so there's no carbon. It's non-living. Um, it also uses soil and things like that. So you can get the pattern. It uses inorganic things, sort of non um, things that are are don't have carbon in them, and turns it sort of non-living things, things that was never associated with with anything non-living. Um, so it uses these non-living things to make some organic matter, and what we know organic is anything with carbon in them. This leaf. Is made of carbon this stem is made of carbon so using 
inorganic things to make organic things. Okay, so I hope that kind of makes sense. And just remember, anything organic is stuff with carbon. And basically, you can think of yourself as you're basically completely carbon. All your cells are made of many carbon molecules. Um, all living things are basically made of mostly carbon. Now, that's what autotrophs do. So when you define this word, make sure you use these two words. They're very important. Now, autotrophs are diff I mean, heterotrophs are slightly different. They don't use sunlight and things like that to make their own, ener own energy. They have a mouth, and they're going to use that to go eat the plant or eat another animal. And that animal, guess what? That animal is made mostly of carbon, right? That means it's made mostly of... Yeah, that means that it is organic. If it's made of carbon, it's organic. And so when this animal goes and eats that other animal, um, it is eating organic matter to uh, for energy, right? So autotrophs make organic matter out of inorganic matter and heterotrophs will just make get their food from organic matter. They don't make their own food. Now, have you? we'll get to these two, by the way. So ignore these images right here. We're, we're going to get to detrovoids and saprotrophs soon because they're very important. Now, have you ever heard of anything that you think can be both? Have you ever, ever heard of any kind of creature that can both make their own food through photosynthesis, like a plant, or and, and, and at the same time can eat other things? Okay, let's see. Here we got them. So there's two. I'm first going to go through one we all know. So we've all heard of something called a Venus flytrap, right? It's like a plant that can eat f insects and stuff like that. So while being able to do uh, photosynthesis, because it's a plant, it has, it has the, in its cells, it has chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is the organelle inside a cell that can carry out photosynthesis and make organic matter from inorganic matter through photosynthesis. Um, but we see it has this like mouth-like thing and can also eat things. So in a way, it can, it's, it's both autotrophic and heterotrophic, right? But it's not actually considered both. And I'll explain why soon. So just bear in mind, this one isn't actually considered both autotrophic and heterotrophic. It's only considered autotrophic, even though it still eats other things. But wait, I'll explain, I'll, I will explain very shortly why that is. Now, let's look at this one before I come back to why this one is only autotrophic. So euglena is one you definitely have to know for the IB. There's many, many IB questions on this one. This one, this creature, is both autotrophic and heterotrophic for sure. And the reason why is because to be both autotrophic and heterotrophic means that without one of them, you can still survive. For example, this euglena, this little creature here, if there was no sunlight, which means it can't, it can't uh, do photosynthesis, um, it can still survive by being a heterotroph. So if there was no sunlight, this creature can still go and engulf things. It kind of, how, how, how it feeds is it swims around and it wraps around creatures and digests them. So it kind of, it, it looks like that's an eye, but it's not. That's like the nucleus. What it does is it goes around and wraps around creatures, kind of, kind of in a circle and digests them. But you don't have to worry about that so much. Now, it can also survive without eating anything. So, for example, say there's no food around to eat, but there's sunlight, then it can still survive. So the only, the only way you can be considered both an autotroph and an heterotroph is when you can survive without one of them. So when there's no sunlight, you can still survive. And when there's no food, you can still survive by doing photosynthesis. Now, the trick with the Venus flytrap is, without sunlight, it will die, which means it is an autotroph. It depends, it needs to make its food from sunlight. The only thing that it gets from being heterotrophic by eating stuff is something called nitrogen. Um, it will eat these, these, um, these insects to get nitrogen. So, when there's no sunlight, it will die because um, eating the creatures, it doesn't get enough energy. It will die. So therefore, it is considered to be autotrophic because it needs it needs to it can only survive by photosynthesis. Okay, so that's why. So the only way you can you can be considered both autotrophic and heterotrophic is when you can survive without one of them. Okay, and that's euglena. Remember this one. Very 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 important. Now you get the idea that all plants are autotrophic, right? 
all plants can be autotrophs. Now, that's not true. There are exceptions to um, certain plants that are plants, but they aren't autotrophic. Like, they can't, they can't do photosynthesis, even though they're plants. This is not a big thing. I don't think you have to matter about this so to care about this so much because um, I haven't seen it appear in any exams. But just in case, um, maybe it would be good to recognize it. Uh, here are some here are some exceptions to certain plants that can't uh, do photosynthesis, so they're not autotrophic, even though they're plants. And that is saprophytes and hey, uh, holoparasites. This, these are two types of plants that are heterotrophic, and they don't actually they. They're not actually autotrophic. They don't, they don't do photosynthesis. Okay, so now we're go, going down to this last thing. What on earth is det detrovores and saprotrophs and what, what's their purpose? Why do they matter? So the green one here, things like earthworms are detrovores. And the other one here in blue, these are mushrooms or the scientific name fungi. Um, now, so mushrooms, saprotrophs, uh, saprotrophs are either mushrooms or bacteria. So either fungi or bacteria. Uh, detrovores are earthworms and things like that, okay? Now, the difference between these two are that, um, well, the first, their similarity is that they, they break down dead material. So when things die, so for example, if you were to go die um, in a field somewhere, these two things will decompose you. It will break you down. And why, did, why, why is it important to break you down? Well, first, because you take up space, man. Imagine if everyone were to die, they would just stay in the fields and stay there forever. The world would get pretty crowded, right? Like, so it's important that you kind of get broken down to make space. So what they do is they break you down. And in a way, they're going to recycle you. They're going to break you down um, into your smallest bits so that you can be recycled. And what I mean by this, I'll show you shortly. So here's this little diagram, because I want to show you clearly what their use is. For now, you only know that they break down or decompose organic, uh, dead organic matter, so things that died. Okay? So here we go. I'll show you exactly why it matters. So remember, let's try and follow this diagram. It should make 100% sense. So we know plants use inorganic matter to make energy, right? So they use sunlight and other inorganic factors. Other inorganic factors include water, um, soil, and sunlight, right? Whatever, like all these things. So it, use, it needs inorganic factors. Without these inorganic factors, it can't make uh, energy. So it, it's really dependent on this. So with these things, these inorganic factors, it makes itself, which is organic. Remember the, uh, Do you remember the definition? <clears throat> Using inorganic matter to make organic matter. So it uses these inorganic matter to make organic matter. Now, heterotrophs, all other creatures, will eat the plants or eat other animals that are organic. So for example, maybe an antelope will eat the plant, and then uh, this hyena will eat that antelope. And so slowly, the organic matter is passed on. So by eating the plant, this animal can survive. But it, what, what did it really eat? It ate organic matter. And and the hyena itself is organic matter. Now, these two sap, uh, these two th creatures, detrovores and sa uh, saprotrophs, are also organic. They also need to eat organic things. They do, and so they eat dead organic things. They eat all. So, for example, if this hyena were to die, the this uh, saprotrophs and detrovore will eat this this dead hyena, which is still organic matter, uh, making it organic matter. But as it breaks it down. What it does is it recycles them. So what they do is they turn some of the organic matter into themselves so they can grow, but the other ones they turn back into inorganic factors. So their role is pretty much recyclers. They use some of the organic matter to survive themselves, and the other they put back into the soil. Because now, if they weren't, if they were, if if this arrow were not to happen, then plants couldn't have enough inorganic. Uh, inorganic matter to make itself and survive and so this chain would not continue. So saprotrophs and detrovores are absolutely essential to make sure the cycle continues so that plants have inorganic matter to use. So that's its use. It's really, it's really, really important. And specific things, one example of things that it recycles is nitrogen compounds. 
Um, and we know nitrogen is so important for um, making proteins and all, all of those things in, in your body. So that's just one example of what it recycles. But you can see why it's so important in continuing this sort of cycle. Um, okay, so I hope this, this made sense so far, these keywords. Um, really remember to remember about the euglena, super important. And sometimes they might try and trick you and use a plant like this. Um, and then you might think that it's both autotrophic and heterotrophic, but in reality, it's only autotrophic. So this is kind of one of the only examples that they give you in the IB that you should know about that is both. Remember the role of detrovores and saprotrophs? Oh yeah, one more thing. So detrovores, this is kind of obvious, but it's important to say. Detrovores, so the worms, digest food internally. So what they do is, what that means is they eat stuff and they break it down inside their body. So this worm will go and eat something with its mouth and it will break down inside the body. So that's called internal digestion. Um, things like saprotrophs, like a mushroom, doesn't have a mouth. So they can't digest food internally, rather di they digest it externally. So for example, on this like, on, on, on the mushroom, they will secrete certain enzyme things. So enzymes are, are like proteins that break down stuff. So by secreting these proteins onto their, like, onto the top part, whatever plants or dead stuff lands on it will get digested and absorbed by the, by the mushroom from the outside in. So they kind of eat stuff on the outside, whereas detrovores eat stuff on the inside. Okay, that's, that's one other important difference to understand. Um, so the next video uh, will be IB questions on this entire topic, 4.1. Uh, so check that out to make sure you understand it.